Hello everyone and welcome back to Shuttle Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. I'm putting this in the tutorial playlist because it continues from the previous video to some extent, but it's sort of not a tutorial, it's more of a report in progress in terms of trying to get this shuttle's configuration files sorted out. And somebody informed me why the vertical stabilizer was rotated by 90 degrees, it's supposed to play better with fair mirror space like that. I've tried both ways, it doesn't seem to fix my problems, so I left it be. Uh, if that's the way Far likes it, that's fine. So I didn't change that rotation. But here you see I'm doing a re-entry. Uh, key thing about the re-entry here, you note I have caps lock on to limit how much RCS it's using, because it likes to roll wiggle. You can see it's sort of rolling off to one side. That's fine. Eventually, once it gets some uh, aerodynamic force upon it, it's going to straighten out. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing, the periapsis is about 40-ish kilometers. The real shuttle would actually have a negative periapsis, but that's not necessary and produces a lot of heating that the shuttle does not seem to withstand very well. But um, the, the heavier the shuttle is, the lower the periapsis needs to be. So that's one little tutorial point because then you're, you have more mass on the surface area and that means that you're going to get less drag. So the more mass you have on a given surface area, the less drag you're going to get. Um, the less mass that you have on the surface area, the more drag you're going to get. So yeah, important for slowing down sufficiently. Okay, uh, so here we are. The shuttle is more or less straightened out, uh, but you can see there's a lot of twitching around and pitchy yaw and roll. Uh, it is, of course, on caps lock, uh, so fine controls, so it's not worrisome yet. But eventually, you can see it maxes out on roll, and it's sort of maxing out on pitch, so I'm going to have to take it off of caps lock. And basically, it has an imbalance in roll that I don't understand. The pitch is easy to understand. That just means that the center of mass is in the wrong location with regard to the center of lift. And to some extent, that'll throw the yaw off as well. I've never seen the roll being off in this phase of, uh, of re-entry after the atmosphere has caught it uh, below 100 kilometers. It's not normal for the roll to be, to be off like this. And so I'm not sure about what's going on there. I've uh, sort of fixed configuration files for shuttles in 0 0.90, 1.1.3, 1 1.3.1, and now this. And this is the first time I've seen roll being um, this kind of an issue. And you can see once I've turned caps lock off, roll is still maxed out. Uh, the pitch is twitching a little bit around its central region, but the roll is gonna go all over the place. And of course we just don't have the fuel for this sort of thing. I'll continue to tweak stuff and we'll try and get the center of lift and center of mass in better locations uh, steadily. But there's the situation that I'm facing and yeah, it just maxes out that roll. You can see it's close to maxing out the pitch and that does cause a problem for the roll because the same thrusters have to be used to hold the pitch and the roll, right? But yeah, it's mostly the roll that has me puzzled because I know how to fix the pitch issue. I don't understand why it's uh, doing this. So if somebody has an idea, uh, feel free to share it. But this is obviously going to go awry as soon as we run out of RCS fuel, if we can't get low enough uh, before then. If we get low enough that the aerodynamic surfaces can straighten the shuttle out, that'd be great. But that's not going to happen. Just for your reference, the shuttle holds roughly 40 degrees pitch during re-entry. Uh, this script that I have in KOS varies it from 38 to 45, and that's because that's easier than doing the S-turns because, well, we can't even control roll right now. So, yeah, uh, I've always been nervous about trying to get it to roll around to uh, lengthen its path and control the energy on re-entry. So, so I just use pitch normally. But um, the KOS script allows me to assess thing consistently. It's the same script I used in 1.3.1, so... I know that if it's going wrong, that's something fundamental, right? It's not just the way I'm handling it. Okay, although it's possible that KOS, the PID controller, may be a little bit different in this version than previously, I don't know. Or at least it might take some more tuning. But 
yeah, things have gone wrong. The forward RCS thrusters in this case uh, ran out after the rear ones. I have them drain last to keep the center mass forward. That's not necessarily the case with the real space shuttle. And so here the shuttle is doing sort of what you would expect the shuttle to do in this situation, though not entirely. Um, because of the way heating is, basically the heat resistance is distributed all around the shuttle instead of just on the bottom. So it has more survivability, but not in that situation. Actually, technically the crew could have survived by going out the hatch and using the escape system out the hatch while they were falling at those speeds. So they could have escaped. I'll maintain that. Anyway, I decided to do a flight test with the shuttle and we do this by strapping jet engines to the side at the center of mass. It produces a little bit extra drag, but overall it works fairly well. These uh, jet engines are not the most powerful that I could have picked. Uh, they have good um, thrust vectoring though, and they produce about 80 kilonewtons apiece. Uh, as a reference, you could probably get off the ground with a thrust to weight ratio of 0.4 just fine, as long as you're not trying to break the sound barrier or anything. So, yeah, thrust weight ratio 0.4 is sufficient, and that you can use for any plane. I think the even the SR-71 only has 0.44 off the ground. So here we go. It is a bit lumbering. It feels a little bit rough. <laughs> it's dra very draggy. It feels more like a pregnant guppy than the shuttle, but... And I worry about how that's affecting it on re-entry because if it's got more drag, the RCS won't be able to handle it. Uh, if, it's, if the drag is producing so much force and the RCS is the only thing that can control the shuttle at that point, that might be a problem if it's got too much drag. But also there might be other factors. First of all, I'm not flying with atmospheric autopilot. I don't have that in right now. Atmospheric autopilot sort of smooths out some of the rough edges when it comes to turning. It mostly feels very draggy when turning, and I feel like atmospheric autopilot saves me somewhat. Also, the frame rates are better, and that's throwing me off in terms of comparing it with uh, KSP 1.3.1. So, it's possible that because the frame rates are higher, it, seem, it feels like it's uh, slowing down faster and dropping faster than it did in previous versions, but that just might be the frame rates. But as you can see, it flies fine at subsonic speeds without any sort of roll issue. So, <laughs> so that's interesting. It does feel a little bit nose heavy. You can see the pitch there is compensating quite a lot. So we can move the center mass and center lift a little bit closer together and adjust for that. So I will do that uh, going forward and maybe, that, maybe that'll help and the roll will self-correct uh, if we get the rest of it right, so we can hope for that, but here we go gliding in very carefully. I guess one other thing I can mention about re-entry is that I always have the script do the re-entry burn at 126 degrees east to land at Cape Canaveral, which is at 8 degrees west, and so that's roughly halfway around the world, uh, which is probably further away than the shuttle actually did re-entry, but it's safer. It has a uh, lesser re-entry angle. Obviously if you wanted to come in steeper like the shuttle does you'd uh, do your retro closer to the KSC and I always started at a one and a half hour orbit for timing purposes so that we would line up properly with Cape Canaveral. It's not like with Kerbin where the Space Center is at the equator with Cape Canaveral being at 28 degrees latitude we need to make sure that we time it right otherwise we could be quite a bit off and so here we go. The air brakes are not working as much as I thought they would. Uh, in fact, they don't seem to be working too much at all. And here is where the fact that I sort of got thrown off by the frame rates, I think, uh, to make me think that I was dropping faster than I should be and I was getting more drag than I should be, led me to have quite a lot more speed approaching the runway than I needed. So, let's see here, uh, get all the, uh, I'm, you know, it would probably be the case that the landing gear would buckle with a landing like that, but we managed it and slowing down safely to a stop. So it can take quite a lot of 
uh, brutality, if you will. The, there's the landing gear built into this model, so it doesn't seem to require additional landing gear. I was nervous about that because there have been versions where the landing gear did not work quite right, but these seem to just fine. So, that being the progress report at this point, I'll continue to work on it. I'll link the current configurations that I have. These are realism overall configurations. You should put them in the RO suggested mods folder in, and replace the ones that are in the space shuttle system folder there. Uh, be careful though, so if you don't know how to do that, you might want to wait a little bit until I do a tutorial. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.